a fellow New Yorker and raised in the same city many years before you. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. This is about the 15th speech we've done in the last couple of days on this subject. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do this morning is give an accordion speech. It's accordion to how much time we have. <clears throat> we are squeezing it down a bit, so I'll try and, uh, and uh, get to the point. Uh, thank you very much for including me. Um, you know, uh, I'd like to begin on a, one quick personal note. I'm the proud descendant of Irish immigrants. I, I grew up in the New York neighborhood uh, for the first five uh, years of school that was filled with Irish uh, American families. And my frequent visits to Ireland, not to visit relatives, actually I'm not working hard to find my relatives, I'm sure we owe them money. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I'm here because of the extraordinary uh, relationship between the U.S. economy and the Irish economy, and that has brought extraordinary personal relationships, and quite frankly, from time to time, I look for a, a good excuse to get back. Um, it's really important uh, to focus not on all of the numbers and the investments, uh, which uh, we've been talking about, but about the relationship between the United States and Ireland, and the extraordinary role that I Irish citizens and Irish people have pay, played in the development of the United States economy for a very long period of time. Uh, they've deepened my appreciation for the Irish grit and their ability to deal with problems and challenges and to deal with the opportunities that are in front of them. Uh, so let's talk about this partnership we want to put together. We're interested here with very good reason in a superb workforce, the abundant business opportunities, the country's position as the gateway to Europe, and the smart public policy decisions that this government has had the courage to make in recent time. You've heard all about our investments in Ireland. I would simply say U.S. firms have invested more capital in Ireland since 1990 than we have in Brazil, Russia, India, and China put together. Uh, that says something. Clearly, it's Ireland, and it's the opportunity to be in Ireland to deal with our business in the EU. Uh, we've stuck with Ireland when they went through their challenges because, quite frankly, we're having the same kinds of challenges. It's all about jobs. You go to Washington and look at our great big building right across from the White House, and there's a huge sign on it. It's bigger than that. And all it says is jobs, jobs, jobs. <clears throat> when the president gets up in the morning and looks across the park, I want him to see that. And I want him to remember and all of the government to remember that governments don't create jobs. Governments help the private sector create jobs by the way they structure the regulatory process, the tax policy, and the, the issues under which governments facilitate uh, the economy of a country. So we're working together to try and get that done. And quite frankly, straight out looking at you, it is absolutely critical to the United States of, Amer of America that we get this trade deal. I'm going to tell you why. Europe is America's largest export partner. Think about it. So if Europe is not doing well, then our exports go down there and our economy goes down. Europe is China's largest export partner. And if Europe's not doing well, China will not do as well. And oh, by the way, China's our fastest growing export partner. Put that triangle together. So we're in this together. Europe needs a relationship, an expanded relationship with the U.S. The U.S. needs an expanded relationship with Europe. And the fundamental place for us to manage that, to engage on it, and to try and make it happen is right here in Ireland. Ireland has the presidency right now of the EU, although, Mr. Ambassador, as you know, I think they got about 11 presidents of different parts of the whole system. But Europe, sitting in the right place, and the Taoiseach is a particularly able and aggressive fellow, and we're looking forward to getting this all kicked off 
uh, in June, right here, or well, maybe right in uh, Brussels, that to be determined, but with the right people. So why do we need this? It's pretty clear. We've laid out what we face. We need jobs. We need economic growth. We need to face the realities that a trade agreement is going to force on us, and that is to look at the fundamental regulatory processes, investment processes, uh, rules, regulations, and all the issues that affect our country. Now, let me tell you something about the U.S. Um, we're, doing, we're doing just about okay, but we have a fundamental problem beyond some of the things I've talked about, that we have a debt and deficit problem and that is highly significant, but nobody is to be blamed. You see, it's all about demographics. We put a, a social security system in place when the average death age was 62, so we made the payment age 65. Great deal. Uh, the death age is no longer 62. On a cumulative basis, it's about 80. We put a Medicare system in place when the average male died at 68 and the average female died at 72, and now they're dying at 80. And who's paying for everything in between? So with 10,000 people a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year retiring, we've got an issue. We don't have to cut it. We have to bend it, fix it, and make it work. And if we don't, everything else will be in serious condition. Europe and the United States, as sophisticated, mature societies, have the fundamental same problems. If we drive the right kind of agreement, it will not only make trade better, but it'll force us to deal with our own problems at home to get the most out of the negotiation. Now, what should this treaty look like? I've got 12 pages to explain that, and I'll do it in a couple of paragraphs. In short, it should open markets for trade in goods and services, investment, procurement, capital, and people, while creating a framework that will help us bridge regulatory differences. Mr. Ambassador, if you can get that done before the end of your term, we will celebrate you with, with great fanfare uh, when you come home. Uh, don't come home until you get it done. <laughs> Let me shift for a minute to the question, not what it should look like, but how do we get there? And the fundamental sentence in how do we get it done, put it simply by moving fast. If we let this thing cook, like my, mo my mother, by the way, great Irish lady, one of the best hostesses that ever lived and one of the worst cooks. Her idea, the Irish way, was to cook it and you're sure it was dead. And <clears throat> And we need to be very careful that we don't do that to this agreement. We have got to move quickly. We should negotiate, ratify, and begin to implement a TTIP in 18 to 24 months. And to make that happen, this June, we need a directive from the President of the United States and the President of the EU to get going and get it done. We're all working very hard. Uh, Mike Froman was here yesterday, who will lead most of that. There is a commitment. There were great discussions in the meetings, and it's time to get on with it. Last uh, year, uh, the Chamber, the Business Roundtable, and dozens of companies and associations put together a business coalition for this trade agreement, and we will push it very hard at home and around Europe as well, if you allow us uh, to participate in that way. So let me conclude. Um, I'm in Ireland because there's some important work to do, but how pleasant it is to do it amongst friends. It would be very easy for an island of just six and a half million people to be swallowed up in a massive global marketplace or a huge trade agreement. It will never happen. Because in Ireland comes the leadership. Ireland stuck to its guns. Ireland stayed with its premise on how it was going to keep its tax policy, how it was going to treat its investors, 
and how it was going to get itself out of the ditch. And I will tell you, all of us should watch that, should learn from it, and should follow it. I look forward to coming back when we get this deal done. Thank you very much.